Okay, welcome to another Falcon 4 BMS tutorial. In this video, we're going to be going over the ground based FCR, attacking ground targets and buildings, CCIP, CCRP, um, and dive toss bombing modes. So, before we start, we're just going to go over some basic terminology. CCIP is a visual bombing mode in which you don't use the FCR, you're just going to be looking at the target and visually attacking it um, and it stands for constantly computed impact point okay it's the most common bombing mode if you're attacking moving objects such as tanks um, vehicles if you're doing precision bombing on individual point targets you would use CCIP the other most common bombing mode is CCRP and CCRP stands for constantly computed release point and the main difference between CCRP and CCIP is that CCRP, uh, you use your FCR, you're going to see radar contacts on your FCR, you're going to lock them up, and you're typically going to be doing it from higher altitudes of 15,000 or greater. It's used for bombing pre-planned or pre-briefed pre targets. It's used for um, attacking targets that are far too dangerous to attack from lower altitudes where air defenses or terrain makes that uh, difficult or impossible. Um, it's mainly used for, like I said, pre-brief targets. Like, uh, for instance, you have a mission where you have to blow up a power plant, nuclear reactor, a barracks, something like that. You would set a target steer point onto the target, reference it through your uh, DED, and then you would drop bombs on it from high altitude. CCRP is a very finicky release system. It's very finicky radar system. Um, if you're not flying perfectly, uh, if you're not flying a perfect profile, the bombs won't come off, and it's also more inaccurate than CCIP. But CCIP again has some weaknesses as well. It doesn't use the radar, so you have to visually find whatever you're bombing, and it doesn't really work above 10,000 feet. If you try to use CCIP above 10,000 feet, it will actually turn into CCRP. And you're just going to have CCRP uh, cues and attack profile anyway. So that's really what we're dealing with here. So right now, as you can see, I'm in navigation mode. This is when you first get your aircraft and you've decided that you want to bomb something. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that your master arm is up and it's armed. We see here the master arm it's in the up position. The next thing we're, wanted, we're gonna want to do is cycle into master air to ground mode by pressing AG on the ICP or by pressing uh, enter or backspace on your keyboard. It's one of those. I usually just uh, I also have a bind on my joystick to cycle air to air and air to ground hard points and I use that to cycle into master modes rather than click the ICP or use my keyboard. So if you have enough buttons to do it, I would highly recommend binding cycle air-to-air -air weapons and cycle air-to-ground weapons. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch into air-to-grounds. So the first thing you're going to notice when you switch into air-to-grounds is um, It's going to be in CCRP mode by default, and the the FCR now has a radar screen, okay? And what it's showing you is essentially a picture of the Earth. Um, by default, in this example, it's scanning 10 miles. Uh, you can click these buttons to increase the range of the radar. And on this screen, returns will show up as white dots, white specks, or you'll actually be able to make out buildings. Uh, using this screen. Um, and as with the air-based FCR, you have, at the bottom left here, you have uh, the target's bullseye position. And below that is your bullseye. And bottom right here, time to target. It'll calculate at your current airspeed and bearing when you're going to reach the target. At the top here, uh, some important buttons. You have uh, GM. This button right here selects the radar mode. 
and in the center where it says norm that's an important button above that that will expand the radar mode into three different settings you have expanded which is exp then you have dbs1 and dbs2 which are doppler beam sharpening one and two the most you can zoom in is dbs2 and dbs2 will almost show the radar is solely high so highly detailed in dbs2 that it almost looks like uh, a thermal image or a flare or something like that. Really high detailed. You can make out, you know, what you're looking at, and that's useful if you don't have a targeting pod or, for whatever reason, you can't visually identify the target. Now, on the right side, the only thing that you're really going to be worrying about here is just where it says SP. If you click that, it goes into snowplow mode, and when you're in snowplow mode the radar will constantly scan in front of you rather than f be fixed on whatever steer point you have selected. So by default, the radar will just it will show you around where you have the steer point. So if you have steer point 3 selected and it's on 10 miles, it will show you 10 miles within steer point 3. Now, there there will be situations where you want to attack something that's not on the flight plan or you're too far away from the steer point in order to use the radar and you want to scan leading up to it. In that case, you can go into snowplow mode and the radar will actively scan in front of you. And I would highly recommend using snowplow mode when you're attacking ground targets because all too often you'll fly out of the flight plan and you'll find your radar is blank because you've gone outside the limits of whatever the range is on your radar. So that's the basics of the FCR. Now we're going to go over some really important features of the FCR. The radar mode is really what we're going to focus on here, okay? By default, it's going to be in GM mode. And in GM mode, anything that has a height of about a meter or greater is going to show up as a white contact on the radar. And that includes buildings, uh, trees, bridges anything it can also include units but it's mostly like this radar picture is actually very rare you usually wouldn't see something this clear you'd usually have hundreds and hundreds of boxes and it's usually from buildings or other obstacles that are pick are being picked up on the radar so it's fine if you're bombing buildings it's fine if you're bombing a pre-briefed target to stay in GM but if you're hunting for moving targets which is what most of you are going to be doing you need to be in GMT mode. And GMT mode stands for ground moving target. The only difference here is that it does not show targets that are stationary, for better or for worse. It will show units that are mobile. Uh, there's also another mode on there which might be useful called C, uh, Sierra Echo Alpha. And that uh, mode is for attacking moving targets that are on the ocean. That, it's basically like GMT except it's optimized for the ocean. That being said, the procedure for attacking a target in uh, CCRP is rather simple. You're just going to slew your, your radar cursor over the target, then press TMS up, then you're going to hold down the pickle button and fly into a, a fall line that appears on your HUD. And you're going to remain relatively level at the artificial horizon. So. We're going to go through that very slowly now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the snowplow mode, just this way we can find some better targets. And I'm also going to expand the resolution. And we can see here, this is what I was talking about before, we can see here there's a whole bunch of uh, buildings probably, all sorts of things. And um, what we're going to do is we're just going to slew over one of them. We're going to press TMS up. Oh, first things first is you might have to press TMS up to be able to move the radar cursor. Once you do that, we're going to go over a contact, press TMS up. That's This screen right here represents when the target's locked. When you lock onto something in uh, CCRP, you can't see anything else. It, it focuses the radar beam on that target, and your picture is blank until you um, press TMS down and you break the lock. And that's something that I should mention now. If you press TMS down, 
it will break the lock on the target. So just keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my SMS page and I'm going to select the weapon that I can actually drop in CCRP. Um, and normally you would do this before you attacked, but since this is an instant action, I have a shitload of different weapons, and it's sort of a rare circumstance that, I, that you'd be doing this. You would want to do this before you attack. I'm just going to switch into the SMS page, and I'm going to uh, pick some rock eyes, which are cluster munitions. And we can see here on the right MFD, uh, it says the bombing mode next to the mode you're in, the master mode, AG master mode, and then next to it is CCRP. And if you click on that, you can select different bombing modes, the most prominent of which are CCRP and CCIP. So I've selected some bombs that I can uh, successfully drop on a building, say. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to just go ahead and bomb a random building, which is usually not good for people's health, but this is a training exercise. Okay, now what we see here on our HUD, we get some new symbology. You're going to see this green line falling through the center, okay? That is called a fall line. That is the attack vector that you need to be on in order to drop your bombs. So what you would do is you would maneuver the meatball, which is indicating where your aircraft is heading, so it's centered on that line. So this thing right here needs to be centered on this line and then you'd nose down a bit so you're level. Then you'd fly into the target while holding TMS down. And the bomb will be released when the computer decides that it's a good release angle. Another feature that you'll see when you're locked onto something is a green box with a, square, with a little square in the middle, okay? That is showing you what the target is. This way you can visually see the target, and confirm that you're hitting the right target. Um, it will display as a box, just like that. And it looks like I'm, I'm hitting like a granary or some sort of barracks building or something. I can't really make it out from this distance. Um, another really important part of the HUD is the bottom right here. When you have something locked up, it will tell you the range of the target, which is the top uh, feature. The second line will be the time to target, and the third line is a uh, combined form of the top two lines. Other than that, the only uh, thing that changes about the HUD is the bottom left here, NAV will be, or whatever mode you were in previously, will be replaced by CCRP. So it's pretty much that simple. So all we're going to do is... We're going to fly on the target. It'll take me about a minute 51 to get there. And I'm just going to hold down uh, TMS up. So I'm going to unpause and we'll go do that. Doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but it has to be relatively in the center. Now I'm holding down the pickle button. I'm one minute out. You're going to see, I can't pause it because I have to do this, but you're going to see a horizontal line fall from the gun cross, and then it's going to get down to the meatball, and then it's going to uh, rise back up. And the second time it falls back down to the meatball is when your bomb is going to release. So there's like a pre, there's a pre-bomb release cue. And then there's a bomb release queue. About 30 seconds out from the target. Twenty-five seconds. Here it comes. It's 
17 seconds. Here comes that horizontal line. You guys see it? It's going to fall down and then it'll come back down again very quickly. Now if that line goes up, then you have a problem. That line... Yep, now that's the final line. I'm holding down pickle the entire time, guys. When that line hits the, the uh, velocity vector, it's over. Bomb will release. Rockeye. Bombs away. Now, if I was lower, if I was at a lower altitude, it would have taken a shorter amount of time in order to release the bomb. There's a lot of different variables here, and that's why the computer controls when you release, not you. Because as humans, we're, we don't have the mental ability to decide when it's going to be a good time to release. There's dozens of factors here. Uh, wind speed, altitudes, uh, bearing, uh, your airspeed, all sorts of variables. And you'll see as we're moving away from the target, in the bottom right of the HUD, the range is increasing and the time the target's increasing. So I think it's, I think I pretty much covered everything with CCRP. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to go and we're going to go over CCIP. I'm going to pause. Now, CCIP, just to refresh, is a visual bombing mode. So what did we do when we were using CCRP? We went down to the FCR, we found the target, we locked onto it, and we released the bomb that way. We used the radar. And you don't have to use the radar, but you have to use some sort of reference. So for instance, if I wanted to, I guess we'll go over this right now, when you change to a steer point, a different steer point using your ICP, you can, uh, the, the FCR will snap to whatever position that steer point is at, and then you don't lock up anything on the FCR, you just hold down pickle and you fly into the fall line. So let's go ahead and I'll show you guys that right now. So right now we have steer point, um, we have steer point two selected. I'm going to take off snowplow mode and we're going to switch to um, steer point three, which is 17 miles away. And note how it does have a position on the FCR. It just, I don't, I'm not locking anything up. Because you can fire at positions at the FCR without locking anything up. You just have to slew the uh, cursor onto the uh, position and then just fly into the fall line after you hold down the pickle button. So, I have steer point three selected. It's 17 miles away. I'm not gonna go through this entire thing and make you guys sit here and watch it, but we can see we can see the steer point over there. It's a air base of some sort. Yeah, it's an air base. We can see it on our HUD, and all I would do is I would just hold down pickle and fly into it, just like you would bomb something that you locked onto. And if I press if I select different steer points, just as I just did, you'll notice that um, it's just like selecting a ground unit. Altitude. It, Altitude. It's going to be over here now. The fall line moves, and the target will move. And this is uh, over 50 miles away, so we're probably going to see it on the horizon. Another thing to mention is that you can visually... Uh, lock onto targets using CCRP is if you move around your radar slew it will actually show you, the target box will display on the HUD so if you see a building that you want to bomb you can which this is a bad example because there's no buildings in front of me let's see uh, you can move the uh, target box onto it and then press TMS up I'm just looking for buildings right now well, let's, let's just imagine that there was a building right there, which there isn't. Uh, all I would do is I would just move the box on top of it and then just move, fly in with uh, holding down pickle. So that's it for, CC, that's it for CCRP. So let's go over uh, CCIP now. So 
again, it's a visual bombing mode. We're going to go down to our right uh, MFD and we're going to select CCIP. Now, what you're going to notice immediately is that your left FCR is now blank. All it's going to show you is the artificial horizon and that's it. It's not going to show you anything else and that is because this bombing mode does not go off of the FCR. It goes off of a secondary type of radar which I'm not going to go into but it's not a radar that you can interact with. Okay? And so everything's visual. What we're going to note on our HUD here is we have a fall line and at the bottom of the fall line is a circle with a dot in it. That is referred to as a pipper, CCIP pipper. And what we're going to do to bomb stuff using CCIP is we're going to just move the pipper onto the what we want to bomb and then hold down TMS up. That's it. And then you just fly into the fall line. The fall line will move around as it is right now. It moves around until you hold down pickle. Then it becomes solid like CCRP. Then you fly into the fall line. Just as you would CCRP. So I'm just going to unpause this and show you guys what I mean. See how it moves? It moves around. So all, all you got to do, and it's, it's a lot better at low altitudes. So all you got to do is visually find something you want to bomb. You might have to look up in your cockpit and then just hold down pickle and fly into it. Rock eyes. Okay. And this is this is the bombing mode that you see in all the Gulf War videos. It's extremely accurate and extremely reliable. It's very versatile and you sort of can feel when you're going to release it. Like right now I can tell just from that angle and if I press pickle, it's just going to immediately release. Or almost immediately. And just like in CCRP, you have that little fall line showing you uh, when the bomb will come off the rack. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause, I'm going to stop the video for a second, go find an armored column to attack, and then show you guys uh, that. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you guys how to use a combination of CCRP and CCIP to prosecute a ground attack. Now, you see, the theory here is that you're going to use CCRP to locate them. Then you're going to use CCIP to attack them. So we'll use the FCR. We'll find them on the FCR. Then we'll attack them using CCIP. And uh, it goes something like this. So the first thing, right now we're in nav mode. We're going to unpause the game and we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start doing it. So I'm unpausing, switching into master air to ground mode, looking for targets using CCRP. See some buildings in front of me. That might be a column. Let's check them out. No, it looks like a building. There we go. You can very clearly see there that that is a column. It's 10 miles off of our nose. There we go. There, there she blows. So now that I visually see this column, I'm going to go back to my SMS page and quickly switch to CCIP. Then I'm going to roll in. Looks like it extends over there, too. Cat flare. Rolling in. Cat flare. Rock eyes. Rock Cat flare. Rock eyes. Rock eyes. Cat flare. Rock eyes. Rock eyes. Rock eyes. Cat flare. Cat 
Chaff flare. Chaff flare. Let's go back and see if uh, how our handiwork paid off. Well, I see some burning fires, so we probably did good. Let's see. Well, we have some burning vehicles. So we definitely achieved our goal here. And if I wanted to, I could reattack this column and inflict even more damage on it. So it should be pretty obvious that we're going to use CCRP to locate the targets and we're going to use CCIP to attack them. And this is ideal for hunting for targets. And this is actually a pretty bad example because normally the targets would be moving around. And that'd be even easier to find them because you just switch to GMT mode and then the only moving targets are gonna be enemy. And one thing that I didn't note that I didn't note in the other part of the video is that when you lock up something on CCRP, you should always declare the target with AWACS before you attack it. But I don't want to go into that in this video. But generally speaking, if you lock something up, make sure you press the Q key and then two to declare them with AWACS. Otherwise you might be killing friendlies and that's no good. Chaff flare. Rock eyes. Rock eyes. Rock eyes. Chaff flare. Rock eyes. Rock eyes. Rock eyes. Chaff flare. Chaff flare. Yeah, okay, one other feature of CCIP that I want to go over is the HUD symbology for um, the maximum pitch that you can make before you hit into the ground with no uh, recovery. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a dive bomb attack and we'll walk through it as we see it. Okay, this open bracket has appeared below the CCIP pipper. See this bracket right here? If this pipper goes below that bracket, there is no way to recover the aircraft. It is unrecoverable from a dive. So when you're doing a, a, a dive bomb attack, this pipper always has to remain above the bracket. It is a law of bombing. So watch. If I start to approach that bracket, it's going to tell me to pull up. I'm dead now. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Altitude. Pull up. See? Altitude. That was very dangerous, and I actually over G'd my aircraft and probably damaged it. So, and you can see, as you gain an altitude and you gain in pitch, that bracket will go away. But if you try to dive again, it's going to come back. See, there it is. If I, if I go any further than that, I have a chance of colliding into the grounds. So that's how to use CCRP and CCIP. Leva covered everything. The next part is going to be dive tossing bombs. The final bombing mode we're going to go over is called dive toss or detoss. Dive toss is a visual bombing mode in which you designate a target visually and then you loft the bomb onto the target. And what that means is, is that the bomb is fired ballistically from the aircraft by pitching the nose of the aircraft up and then releasing the bomb. And that allows you to achieve a standoff advantage against targets that otherwise you're unable to fly over due to uh, air threats or terrain that's in the way or other circumstances. It's often used against SAM sites. It's often used against targets which are covered by AAA envelope. And 
it's, it's used when you can't fly directly over the target. That being said, in order to activate dive toss, you have to switch into uh, master air to ground mode, as usual, and you need to select dive toss where it says CCRP. We're now good to go for dive toss. Now, the angle in which you need to pitch your nose up is determined by the SMS page and the attack profile. You can change it by going to control right here. We're not going to go into that for this video, but you just need to know what the release angle is and where it is. Right here, it's under the arming delay. The default release angle for these BD-33s is 45 degrees. So that means I have to nose up 45 degrees in order to release these bombs with lofting. Now let's go over the HUD symbology. So what you're going to find is that when you switch into DTOS, you're going to see the CCRP style TD box or targeting designator box. It's going to be on the meatball. The idea behind using this mode is that you slew the box onto the target that you want to bomb visually, and then you hold down pickle, you fly the fall line that's created, just like in CCRP, then you're going to have a cue to release it. And when that cue presents itself, you're going to pitch up and to the release angle, and the bombs will come off the, uh, come off the aircraft, and then launch ballistically. And doing it this way, you can accomplish Bomb, you know, bombs be, have a range now of about seven miles if you toss them like this way. Um, it's not the most accurate mode, but it is the most effective against targets when you don't have Mavericks or other standoff weapons. We can also note that on the bottom right of our HUD, it changed from NAV to DTOS. So now we're going to begin an attack and dive toss. I've already set up the release angle and I've set up the bombing mode to DTOS on the on our HUD by the meatball we see the TD or target designator box we move this box onto what we want to bomb visually then we hold down pickle until we hold down pickle it's not going to be ground stabilized so I see some targets over here on the range going to ground stabilize and then fly into the fall line just like you would CCRP as soon as that as soon as that horizontal line hits the artificial horizon we're going to get a flashing circle and then we nose up pitch up to our release angle 20 degrees up then hold okay, 20 degrees now I gotta hold this angle done five miles away from the target now I'm gonna peel out normally uh, you'd be getting fired on by AAA or whatever it was that you were lofting on get away from the target And that's how you do a loft using dive toss. Now, it is possible to loft using other bombing modes. For instance, if you're in CCRP, it will give you a loft indicator on your HUD, in which case you can loft the bomb. Uh, the F-16 is sort of unique in that the various bombing modes can turn into each other dependent on various situations. So let's go ahead and select CCRP. in snowplow mode. Okay, there's a... That one's a little far. I want to get something closer so you don't have to watch me fly. Here we go. This one's much better. Two minutes to target. I don't know what this is. It could be someone's house. I have no idea. Don't really care. It looks like a factory of some sort. I'm going to fly into it just like I would um, in normal CCRP. And you're going to see the, the cue for lofting is going to appear just the same. And at that point, I can initiate a dive toss by nosing up to the release angle. Now, the greater the release angle, the further you can loft, but the harder it is to maintain your aircraft. So, if you do a 45 degrees, it's really hard to get up that high or higher and maintain that. So yeah, you might want to opt for 20, 25 degrees. It's a lot easier to maintain and a lot easier to execute, especially as a new pilot. So I'm about 40 seconds out from the target. I should have the release cue indicator momentarily. 
see here some factory buildings. Thirty seconds from target, eleven miles. The first horizontal line should be dropping soon. Here it comes. Get ready to pitch up. Now, pitch up 20 degrees and hold it. Away. Go defensive. Cap flare. Cap flare. Cap flare. Remember not to over G your aircraft. And that's how you do uh, lofting and CCRP. So hopefully I covered some interesting topics. Let me know if there's anything else I can expand upon in a future video.